What's up everybody, Major Retired Richard Ojeda here, and you are watching Ojeda Live. Countdown achieved. It's time for Ojeda Live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ojeda Live. We got uh, Ainsley Mather on here from Dallas, Texas. Maureen is with us. Roy Pilovar from Jupiter, Florida is here. My secret squirrel, David Weaver, is with us. We got Andrew Lawrenson on here. We got Jonathan Kramer with us. We got Sandra Mello. We got R.D. Schroederdale. We got Joy Hawkins from Texas on. We got Donna Markham from West Virginia. Eric Shepard is with us from Ohio. We got Steve Otta on here. Anna Russell is with us. John, uh, Jennifer Peck. We got Pam Garrison from Fayette County, West Virginia. We got Ben Persglub from uh, Pennsylvania. We got Glenna Marley on here. John Williamson from Fairhope, Alabama. Angela Cartwright is with us from Fort Worth, Texas. Aurora Torado is with us. Jason Blair, Ch Communications Workers of America, Local 3310 from Frankfort, Kentucky. We got Mike Ward on here from Western Australia. Becky Vanderveer is with us. Lynn Williams. Annette Marker from Ohio. Doug Green is with us. What's up, Doug? We got Jim Gom uh, Gomez with us. Uh, we got Peggy Dockham. We got Michael Combs. We got Sharon Ramey on here. Uh, I agree, Sharon, without a doubt. And we got uh, Sharon Tincher with the Blue Waves. Matt Knight is with us. Lisa Mitchell is with us. A lot of people. We are 126 people away from hitting the 122,500 followers. So help us be able to get that 126. Let's make sure that we can get some people to follow us. All right, folks, got some stuff to talk about here. First and foremost, uh, Israeli is under attack. Uh, Iran has launched countless uh, rockets in their direction. We're already seeing where the Iron Dome is uh, knocking some of these out of the sky. But uh, there's also the possibility that some of them actually are able to get through and will do some damage. And uh, let me tell you something. Horrible move from Iran, because make no mistake about it. Does Iran have an Iron Dome? Because I don't think that they do. And I'm going to tell you that uh, there will be some stuff raining down on Iran. And, and you know, it, it, once again, governments, governments, uh, there are probably amazing people, you know, no matter what, you know, even 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 in, in, in the Middle East, there are amazing people that you will get to meet if you find yourself deployed to the Middle East, uh, people that love their families just like you love your families. But uh this whole, you know, it, it just amazes me. It's kind of like the Holy Land. It's the Holy Land. Why is the Holy Land the spot for the most hatred that exists in our world today? There ain't nothing, uh, you know, uh, you want to talk about true hatred. And and let me tell you something. There are, there are people from both sides that can point out atrocities from both sides. I, you know, I don't know if this is, if this keeps escalating and it gets worse, it absolutely could could turn things uh, really, really sour for a lot of people in this world. Let's hope that uh, let's hope that there, there's going to be an end to this violence in the very near future. There are far too many people that are losing their lives, even in Russia. The mere fact that they've literally lost an entire generation over one man's greed. You know, I, I, I don't want that to happen. I wish that the Russian people would rise up and realize that that one man and his greed is killing an entire generation, over 450,000 dead. It's horrible. Well, uh, in Mingo County, West Virginia today, there was a rally. It was a Republican rally, I guess. And uh, a guy by the name of uh, Derek Evans, who is running for, uh, the basic, he's running for Congress. Uh, he addressed a crowd of course, talking about how he is such a Christian. He, he leads with his, I'm a Christian, Christianity. And then he tells everybody that what we should be doing is we should be shooting anybody coming across the border. No matter what, shoot them, kill them. How Christian is that? So all of you people in Mingo County that listen to this friggin' jackass, are you in agreement that you know, we should shoot people at the border because here's the thing. 
if you are a Christian, and most of you are some lying motherfuckers, you're not, you're about as Christian as a fucking broken condom. But you sure do claim Christianity. You're the kind of people that don't give two shits about nothing, but when you're in trouble all of a sudden, it's let's talk to God. When you're not in trouble, you really don't give a shit. And Derek Evans is one of those jackaloons. Now, I despise Carol Miller. Because once again, I should have absolutely won that race. If it wasn't for that orange freaking shit stain coming to West Virginia, I would have been the next member of Congress from West Virginia. And Carol Miller has done nothing for the people of West Virginia. She's got herself a $3.1 million PPP loan, and that's it. But let me tell you something. Derek Evans is absolutely as cartoonish as poorly educated as Marge the Trainwreck Green and Lauren Boebert. And we don't need any more of those dumb asses. You know, here's the guy who's running because he thinks that what he did on January 6th was popular and that people should want to support him. And if you support him because he stormed the Capitol, then you're part of the problem. If you think that sending Derek Evans to represent you in Washington, D.C. is the right thing to do, you're absolutely uh, cartoonishly stupid. Here is a guy who knows nothing about legislation, and he'll go to Washington, D.C., and he will do absolutely nothing. And oh, by the way, guess what? The Republicans are not going to be in charge in the very near future. So you guys from West Virginia, keep electing those Republicans. They haven't done jack shit for you while they're in the majority. So they can, you can guarantee they ain't going to be shit going to get done when they're in the minority. And because of their actions, there's no damn way that the friggin' Republicans keep control of the House of Representatives. No friggin' way. Now, here's something else. Once again, I've said this before. Stop donating to any cause at Walmart or Target or Sam's or anywhere else. Any store that you go into that says, would you like to donate a dollar for so-and-so? Stop giving them your money. Because what you don't understand is that store, and I don't give a shit what store it is, every single store across the damn country right now is actually friggin' preying on its daggone people that, that, that shop at their stores. If you look at the, the boxes now, the boxes of cookies are smaller. Have you got any of the uh, Girl Scout cookies? Did you notice how, how small they are? How the boxes are smaller, there's less cookies. You're paying the same amount that you paid last year, but you're getting less. And the same thing goes with boxes of cereal and everything else in any damn store that's out there. The stores have always been preying on the people. Right now, inflation is down, our economy is booming, but we're still spending a fortune. And we're spending a fortune because the corporations, that is Walmart, Target, the rest of these stores, Wendy's, McDonald's, all these places. They're blaming the economy on President Biden while they're the ones jacking up the prices and getting away with it. And that's a fact. So when you're checking out, you're already friggin' getting nickeled and dimed. And then they're going to ask you for a dollar. And let me tell you something. They're going to take your dollar and everybody else who donated dollars all across the country, all across the world, because there's Walmarts in, in Germany. There's Walmarts all over the world. There's Targets. There's, there's every, any kind of store you can think about all over the world. And they're taking all these dollars from all these people, and they're adding them up. And what they do is they basically say, here's the money, and it's the money that they were given by their friggin' shoppers. They didn't go out of their pocket. And what they're going to do is they're going to donate that chunk of money to a cause. And because they're donating money to a cause, they're going to use that to get a big tax break. We're literally giving the people that stab us in the back at the freaking daggone checkout money so that they can claim to give a shit about any cause and then write it all off on their taxes. They already are robbing us blind. Stop basically allowing them to rob you blind. Because asking for your hard-earned money so they can donate it on their behalf 
You ever watch? Remember when I was a kid? I remember used to watch uh, the Jerry uh, Jerry. Uh, he was a comedian, Jerry Lewis. It was the whole big uh, multiple sclerosis, and every year there was a big, huge uh, event, and everybody watched it. I mean, because it was every entertainer you could think of. It was actually really, really great to watch, and and everybody donated. I mean, my mother, my mother, and father every year made sure they donated, and, and their thoughts were, "Was we donate to this because." This is basically, we're blessed that we didn't have to have children that were born with these type of disabilities. And, and that's a wonderful way to be. But once again, you also saw all those stores would walk up there and they'd be like, well, this store, this store Sears would like to give, you know, uh, uh, multiple sclerosis this much money. But once again, did it come from the owners of the company of Sears or whatever company it was, Walmart? Target, what does that? Did it really come from them, or did it come from the pockets of their people that frequent their establishments? Because the truth is, that's where it comes from, and they don't have no shame to tell that they are the ones who are giving it, and absolutely will claim it on their taxes and get a, a huge tax break because of it. Stop giving them the ability to nickel and dime you, and then use it as their own damn tax break. All right. The death toll continues to rise in Russia. Uh, once again, they are losing literally an entire battalion every single day and equipment. Uh, yesterday, they lost 840 Russian troops. And right now, Vladimir Putin is talking about basically bringing in 400,000 new troops. Do you know what that means? That's not bringing in 400,000 new troops that were in on the military bases. That's basically telling all that young men, all those young kids out there that are getting ready to graduate from school, what they're going to get is what our Vietnam veterans got. Basically, a letter in the mail that says you need to sign up, you need to show up on this date, and you're going to be basically brought into active military service. And those 400,000 people, if it's anything like we've been seeing, is they're going to be basically given a very, very short class to be able to try to survive. They're going to give them a uniform. They'll probably give them one or two days worth of food, and they're going to send them straight to the front line where they're going to be slaughtered. And, uh, you know, if you think that the Russians have been losing a battalion a day now, imagine what happens when they send 400,000 poorly trained troops into Ukraine, because it's going to be much worse. We're going to see numbers that are going to double what we're seeing right now. And, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, if that's the, if that's the path that Vladimir Putin wants to go on, the downside to that, though, is that, once again, this is one man and this one man's dream of greed, of controlling not just more land. He doesn't just want to go back to where in Russia controlled, you know, uh, all these different countries. We're talking Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan. We're talking uh, uh, Georgia, uh, Azerbaijan. We're talking about literally almost the majority of, 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 of Europe. Like from, from, from Germany on to the West, all underneath the Russian leadership. And it's not just that he wants to have that land back, but he wants the capabilities that that land provides. One of the reasons why they're going after Ukraine is Ukraine is a major player when it comes to grain. They're like the fourth largest grain producer on the face of the earth. And that's a big deal, especially to Russia who literally has 85% of their land is nothing but a daggone ice uh, jungle. It's nothing but ice. And I have flown over this chunk of ice. You're talking, you're flying for five, six hours, and you may not even see one, maybe two lights. Like in pitch darkness, you're looking at you can't see nothing. But then, oh, but the, there's a light. One single light bulb on some place. Who knows what it's in? But there's one down there, and that's it. You may see maybe two lights your entire flight over top of Siberia. It is literally nothing but an ice desert. So Vladimir Putin wants to get his hands on all that grain. For one, 
it would guarantee that his people would always have food. But once again, he would also use it to sell. Uh, and let me tell you something. These countries that were behind the Iron Curtain, they don't ever want to go back to being under Russia's control. Because once again, Russia took from them. Russia took from all of them and left them with just enough to barely survive. These are people who lived their entire lives basically eking out a living, being given barely just enough to survive to make it through the month. That's not, that's not thriving, people. That's surviving. There's a big difference between the two. A big difference. Surviving means you get just the bare minimum to keep, you, to keep your friggin' heart uh, beating. That's as good as it gets. That's not enjoying anything. That's not thriving. It's just surviving. And people deserve better. I love this one meme I saw. And it said, hate liberals all week and then worship one on Sunday. That's right. Jesus Christ was a liberal. Jesus Christ said to welcome the stranger, not shoot them at the border, Derek Evans, you sack of shit. I'm so sick and tired of fake religion. I'm so sick and tired. What they say? I'm tired of these assholes who walk around with a mouthful of scripture and a heart full of hate. I've never in my life seen so many people claim to, to, to walk with Jesus while being the worst person possible. You judge everybody. If a person's got a tattoo, you automatically look down on them. If a person is struggling, you look down on them. You will only give money to somebody that is struggling if a camera is friggin' pointed at you. And then all of a sudden, here. But other than that, you don't give two shits about nobody. But make no mistake about it, you have a mouthful of scripture. It don't mean shit to nobody. And the majority of people know that you're just a dirty piece of shit. The Biden administration has announced that they are closing what is often known as the gun show loophole. Now, let me just tell you all something here. First and foremost, I am a... Second Amendment supporter. It is what it is. I've got guns. I've got guns all over my house. They are they are in secure positions, by the way, too. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I've said this many times. Even though I believe in the Second Amendment, I think that we should have some common sense gun reform in this country. And what I mean is that anybody who has been arrested that has any form of violence, if you are arrested for violence, then you are no longer allowed to carry a gun. And it should be for the rest of your life. And if you're caught with a gun, then you can go back to prison. But once again, we absolutely should make it to where people that have a history of violence don't get their hands on guns. I also think that there should be a rule or a law that said that if you have a child in your home that is uh, below the age of 18, you must have trigger locks for all of your weapons. These don't cost hardly anything at all. I think that that's something that is important. And those are two things that I think that would absolutely uh, save a lot of lives. But once again, they are expanding background checks on uh, firearm purchases, which there's nothing wrong with that. Folks, look, first and foremost, we require more uh, 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 authorization so a person can drive a car down the road than we do allowing a person to be able to carry a gun uh, anywhere. And the truth is both of them are deadly if placed in the hands of the wrong people. So let that sink in. The gun show loophole has been cited for years as a major hole in the federal background check system, allowing a vast number of private sales to take place without background checks, where you can show up and you can purchase weapons. And at the end of the day, folks, look, look, 
Democrats aren't coming to take your guns. Joe Biden has never went after your guns. President Obama didn't go after your guns. Hillary, uh, Bill Clinton didn't go after your guns. All right? And that's, that's bullshit. But make no mistake about it. There's there are certain things. You know, personally, I know that if you have a lot of money, if you have a lot of money, you can purchase pretty much almost any type of firearm that you want. But I believe that for a person to be able to purchase certain firearms, like M60 machine guns, M240 Bravos, uh, 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 M249s, uh, any 50 caliber, uh, you know, 50 caliber in terms of like military grade 50 caliber. You can buy a 50 caliber revolver, 50 caliber pistol. Uh, but if you're doing it, you know, purchase like a, like an actual friggin' M2, a friggin' Modus, uh, I think that you should have a specific license that says that you have these type of these these pieces of equipment. Because let me tell you something: if something like a 50 caliber machine gun fell into the hands of the wrong person who decided to do exactly what took place at a Jason Aldean concert where he ran ran off, uh, by the way. Uh, but uh, but I can only begin to imagine what a 50 caliber machine gun would have done to a crowd like that. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's important that, you know what, there should be certain weapons that not everybody can get unless you have certain licenses. Uh, I just think that that would be common sense in terms of gun reform that I think would be beneficial for us all. Alabama has chose to cancel free lunch programs for the summer breaks for children. So once again, once again, how Christian of you. Folks, I come from a, a very, very poor part of the country, Southern West Virginia. You got places like McDowell County, which is one of the poorest counties in the country. But I'm going to tell you that I've told this story where I come from, the kids that live directly behind the high school, behind the town of Logan, West Virginia, up on the hills. There's a lot of kids that live up there. And uh, there's a lot of people that live up there that are very, very poor. They don't have much at all. And those kids got to get up at 6 o'clock, even on the, the summer break, and run down the hill to run into the Logan Middle School where they will get a free breakfast. And when they're done with breakfast, as they walk out, they're given a, a, a brown bag that's got a, a sandwich, it's got a Capri Sun, and it's got a piece of fruit, an orange or an apple in it. And let me tell you something. If those kids don't run down there and get that breakfast and grab that lunch, they don't eat that day. And you've got Alabama basically saying, we don't give a shit about these poor kids when the summer comes. Let me tell you something. There are parents and there are kids that literally are in tears on the last day of every school year. And it's not because they're going to miss all those seniors that are taking off. It's because they know that they're struggling. And if there's no free lunch programs, I'm telling you right now, these people are going to be desperate. And why would we want to put children in a situation of desperation if we actually cared? If we actually uh, put our money where our mouth is when we talk about religion? You know, I, I, I don't see taking any food away from children as a Christian thing to do. So fuck you, Alabama, and all of the friggin' daggone legislators that push this kind of garbage. You know, it, I, it's, it sickens me because the majority of people that run for office have money. You've got a lot of people that run for office on the state level that specifically don't give a shit about nothing. And every time there's a bill, they look at that bill to figure out how that bill can help them. And they will even dag on make additions to a bill that will basically help them. You know, you know when I when I pushed my uh, bill for medical cannabis in West Virginia, one of the things we had to fight was making sure nobody was going to go in there and dag on change the legislation. Where basically what we wanted is, I said, I don't want anybody who votes on this bill, which means the members of the Senate and the people in the House, to be able to monetize because of it. Let me tell you something. When they passed charter schools in West Virginia, there was quite a few of those assholes that went out and bought big structures and started charter schools. 
They're not friggin' educators. They're not lifelong educators. They don't have degrees in education. But they do know that charter schools means that they're going to get a shit ton of money. And the truth is, is they can pretty much do whatever the hell they want. They don't even have to have people qualified. There was a charter school in Williamson, West Virginia, that apparently had nothing but daggone family members running it. So let that sink in. They may have had a couple people that, that were certified, but once again, it's okay. Because charter schools, you don't have to. You don't have to have people that are educated. You don't have to run a bus. And here's another thing too. That's another way to make sure if you don't like your white kids going to school with kids of color, start a charter school and then don't run any buses because people of color that live in the inner cities may not have the ability to be able to make it to your charter school. And you're going to be completely fine with that because that's the reality of you being just a colossal racist prick. All right, folks, let's check out our memes of the day. Hunter's laptop! Hunter's laptop! Trump's purpose is clear. Attack the FBI, attack the free press, spread propaganda, threaten our allies, praise our enemies, embolden Nazis, demonize immigrants, and dismantle America from within. Look at that smile. Look at this. I fucking hate the air that that orange turd breathes. I despise him. I absolutely despise him. I want him to live the rest of his life, and it shouldn't be much long, but to be miserable every single day. You know, I'm really excited about this, this, this hush money trial because the truth is, is there's going to be some things. Melania Trump doesn't know everything. There's going to be some things that's going to come out in this trial that's going to shove egg all over her face. And you know what? I'm hoping that it convinces her just to say, you know what? You orange sack of shit, I'm cutting ties. I hope she divorces his ass. I don't give two shits. I don't care nothing about him. I hope the rest of his friggin' life is absolutely miserable. Miserable. I hope his children friggin' roll on him. And I hope those little bastards and brats, I hope they dag on roll and fight each other all the way through. I don't give a shit because you know what? When this is over with, they'll never talk to each other again. They weren't raised with love. They wasn't raised to take care of one another. They were raised to be predators, to take as much as they can. Even if it was from a children's charity, take as much as you can, which is why they can't be anywhere near children's charities. But once again, that's all you need to know to know about what a sack of shit the Trump family is. And all of you people that still support Donald Trump, let me tell you something. You're only doing it because Donald Trump hates the same people that you hate. And shame on you, and don't call yourself a Christian. You're a fake Christian, and that's a fact. And your fake Christianity, you can shove it up your fucking ass. All right, let's see another one. Republican Adam Kinzinger just declared that Americans are sick of Mars the train writ dream. Folks, absolutely. I, I, I get tired of her running her mouth. She is stupid. She, she doesn't even, like, words. Like, I mean, goodness gracious. Gestapo. What'd she say? Gaspacho, gish, gish, what is it? Uh, uh, you know, she said gaspacho. I don't know. She, she can't even say words properly. Here I am Here I am screwing up the word. But uh, but once again, you know, she's not an educated person. Uh, I, I, I would tell you that her college, her college that she graduated from, because she's graduated from school, her college should absolutely rescind uh, that daggone degree because she's an embarrassment. If I found out that she went to the same college I went to, uh, I would have to friggin I there, I would have to say something to somebody. Absolute garbage. She is pure trash. She's an oxygen thief. She's an idiot. And I'm telling you right now, I really hope that when this is all said and done with Donald Trump, that we go after these friggin assholes because I really believe that that friggin troglodyte is probably the friggin damn bomber, the pipe bomber. And there are plenty of daggum body expert specialists that hold doctorate degrees that absolutely say that she does have all the mannerisms that they saw in that video. All right, let's see another one more. Roderick Berry, that's what I'm talking about. Everybody, everybody. And that Roderick, man, I don't think anybody wants to mess with that dude right there. That dude looks like he kicks some serious ass. 
But let me tell you something. Thank you, Roderick. That means the world to me, man. Everybody, get the get the shirts. Go to turnleftpack.org and get you an OJ Alive. Come on. Everybody needs to have an OJ Alive shirt. Folks, I mean, you guys watch me every night. I want you to be able to walk out into your communities and people can go, what's that? And you can tell them, what? It's a show that comes on every night at 8.30 and this guy will tell you what the fuck's going on. Folks, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. If my language bothered you, I'm sorry, but I gotta be me and I say what I say and that's just how it goes. I do love each and every one of y'all dearly because you guys have been with me for so long and I appreciate you. Uh, I'm excited that we are literally like 27 days out of me landing in Europe. It's going to be freaking phenomenal. We're going to have a great time. And I'm going to want everybody to follow and watch everything that I do. I'm going to be posting videos nonstop. And as soon as you wake up in the morning, go check OGEN Alive, check my Facebook page. And if you see videos, watch them and share them. I, you know, I really, really would love for people to look at my my videos and make the decision that they want to they want to travel. Uh, I'm telling you that travel is far more cheaper than you think. And you can absolutely set yourself on a budget where you can travel. You know, there are stores everywhere across Europe. And there are these huge markets everywhere across Europe. And you can go into a market and you can literally buy the, the materials for an amazing sandwich and you can sit there and make your sandwich and eat it and you're going to be fine. You can go in the stores. They got pre-made sandwiches. Everything is great. No different than anything else. So you don't have to go every night into a major restaurant and spend $50, $60 on a meal. You absolutely can eat. All, uh, the street food in Europe is, is known for street food. Let me tell you something. If you've never ate a donor kebab, look it up. Look up donor kebab. Look up currywurst. I'm telling you, the street food in Europe is on fire, and it is awesome, and you can just eat that. It's cheap. It's awesome, and once again, it allows you the ability to make sure that you can make it from, from start to finish through your trip, and if you see something that you really want, then you can have it. That's how it goes. You know, I take I take the money with me. I take a couple cards with me. And at the end of the day, I usually end up coming home with most of my cash that I left with. And that's a fact. And you can too. Just check out my videos and learn the ropes. Y'all be good to each other and I'll see you tomorrow. Sappers clear the way. Airborne all the way. Action. Eyes right.